Hello, I'm Michelle Crummel, and in this video, we are going to look at packages, macros, and graphics. Let's start by saving our file. So I have a file that I've already started, and I am just going to save that as tutorial six. So let me find the folder where I want to save that. Tutorial six. And if we look at that folder here, we can see that it is tutorial06.tech. And we're gonna start by looking at some packages that we can use to change how this document looks. Packages are used to load special instructions for the compiler. So you can do things like add features that aren't included in the standard distribution or modify the standard rules for fonts and document formatting. If you wanna use a package, you place it in the preamble. So the preamble is the section of code between document class and begin document. So I'm going to come up here to line number two and just hit enter a few times to give myself some space. And we can start entering the packages that we want to use. So the first package I'm gonna show you is one that I use in almost every document I create, and that is going to affect the size of the margins for my output document. If you'll notice, and I'm going to um, change the zoom here so that we can see the entire page. There's a lot of white space at the top and on the left and on the right, and even at the bottom below the page number. So this is just the default margins that are set here. And normally the, these margins are too large for the kinds of documents that I'm creating. I prefer to have about a one inch margin. So we can use a package to deal with that. Now the easiest way, if I just want one inch margins on all sides, is to use a package called full page. To use a package, we're gonna type backslash use package, I'm going to choose the uh, option with the curly brackets, and then I'm going to type the name of the package inside of the curly brackets. So it's just full page. And then I'm gonna compile. So we can come up here to compile, or I can just hit F2 as a keyboard shortcut. So notice what happened. Now we've got a one inch margin at the top, at the left, at the bottom, and let's go back to full page view. And you can see we also now have decreased that margin at the bottom. So that's just really quick, easy package to use if you want one inch margins on all sides. Now you can use different size papers. Uh, in the United States, typically we use paper that is eight and a half inches by 11. And if you wanna make sure you are set up for that, uh, you can come up here and type letter paper to make sure we're using letter paper. If you are using A4 size paper, you can type A4 paper up here. And when I compile, um, I don't know if you noticed that it went pretty quick. There was only a very slight difference, but look at the bottom of the page here. Um, that did make quite, quite a difference. So let me go back to letter paper. And that's gonna give me that eight and a half by 11 size paper. Now, I might not want one inch margins on all sides. We can customize this further if we use a different package. So instead of the full page package, I'm going to use the geometry package. And this is the one that I use when I create all of my documents, just because it does give me some more control. So the geometry package, I think if I compile right now, it's not going to do anything. I haven't really told it what I want it to do. Yeah, it looks like it maybe it just went back to the default uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. Now I'm just uh, pay, fit to page width here. And we can come in front of those curly brackets and put square brackets, and that is where I'm going to enter the options that I want to use with this package. So if I do want one inch margins, I'm going to type margin equals one inch and compile. Um, F1 to compile. I may have said F2 earlier. I don't remember F1 to compile. Uh, and now I have one inch margin. So this really has the same effect as that full page package when I when I do it like this and just say, give me one, one inch margins all, all the way around. Uh, although it looks like we don't have a whole lot of space under the page number there. I can make this really specific and say, no, I want the top to be one inch and the bottom 
to be one inch, but the left to be 0 0.5 inches and the right to equal 0 0.5 inches. And let's compile that. And now you can see that I do have those larger uh, margins on the top and bottom compared to what I have on the left and right. Okay, um, now my margins are a little bit too small for my taste, so I might change that. And you certainly don't have to use inches. You can use centimeters. You can use any valid measurement that LaTeX will accept here. Okay, um, typically I just use one inch, but we will leave that like so for now. And let's talk about a another package. Actually, before we move away from the geometry package, you can also explicitly specify your paper size. So let me just show you that real quick. We could say paper width equals 8.5 inches if we're working with eight and a half by 11. And then we can say paper height equals 11 inches. Okay, so if I did want to change the size of my output for my paper, I don't know, maybe I want to do something crazy like a five by seven. And then we can see what happens. So when you print this, it's going to print five by seven instead of now eight and a half by 11. So there might be some applications for that if you're, if you want, if maybe if you're making flashcards, for example, and you want them to be smaller, then you could adjust that paper size. Even if your actual paper is not that size, it would restrict the output to that size for you. Okay, so let's just go back. <laughs> this is bugging me just because it's not what I like to use. Okay, there we go. That's making me feel more comfortable. I've got one inch margins all around. Okay, let's talk about another package. And sometimes you're trying to type mathematical notation. Maybe you're looking up some syntax to do something like the symbol for the set of all real numbers and you try and type the code and then you get some kind of error. Well, that um, actually requires a package. So I'm going to do use package. And the name of the package that we're going to want to use for that is AMS fonts. That package is going to allow us to use some specialized math notation. So let me come over here to my questions and then add in before question number one. Uh, let's just say I, we want something, something to do with all real numbers. I'm just going to type this is the symbol for all real numbers. And the uh, code for that, we have to be in math mode. We're going to do backslash math BB. You can see that it's popping up as a suggestion for me here. And then we're just going to put a capital R, close math mode and compile. And I will zoom in over here so we can get a better view of that. But now we have there the symbol, oh, I misspelled symbol, the symbol for all real numbers. And we, of course, have other symbols that we can use, like the symbol for the set of integers. So let me just copy that. The symbol for, and I probably should say for the set of, yeah, let's do that properly, for the set of integers. And that is going to be the capital Z. And we can see that it produces that symbol for us there. We might want the set of rational numbers. And that would be a Q. You get the idea. Now, if I didn't have this package loaded, I'm gonna remove that and compile, and you'll see that I get an error. It's looking for, when you see this undefined control sequence, it doesn't recognize that command. We do need to load um, a package. I don't know if it tells me in the error message that which package I need, but sometimes you will encounter that. So we wanna make sure that we're using that package. And whenever I'm creating a document, I automatically load the AMS fonts package whether I need it or not, because I never know when I'm going to end up typing 
some mathematical you know, symbol that might require it. And if you are not including any options, so you're not using the square brackets to define any specific options, then you can actually load multiple packages all using one command. So here I can type, for example, AMS fonts, comma, and then the name of another package that I want to use. So I typically will load AMS fonts, AMS sim, and what's the other one? AMS math, I think. Those three, I just always, when I start my documents, I load those three packages, just in case I end up needing them. And, you know, in the end, if you comment that out and compile and everything looks fine, you didn't really need those packages, you can always just leave it commented out or you can delete it from your code, but I always just keep it in. It's not harming anything. All right. So you load your packages again in the preamble, that is before the backslash begin document. Now you can also load some macros in your preamble. So macros are used to define your own custom LaTeX commands. And there are a few macros that I use often that I'm going to share with you. But before I do that, let's just you know look at how a macro might work in general. So let's say you're working on a document and there's a little snippet of code that you know that you're going to use multiple times in your document. You can define it once using a custom LaTeX command and then within the body of your document, whenever you wanna call that up, you can just type that you know command that you've created instead of having to type the whole code. So for example, let's just say we were we were typing a paper and we were we knew that we were going to be working with a rational function and having to type it several times throughout the document. So let's just say that that function is y equals and then we've got the fraction x over 3x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, now I'm in the preamble right now, so Compiling will probably give me an error. Like it doesn't make sense to have this up here. I don't know that I've ever tried doing that before. Yeah, I did get I did get an error because I'm trying to type this before my begin document. It doesn't like that. Um, but I just wanted to establish that this is an equation. In fact, let's move it on down here just so we can take a look at it on our document. It doesn't look that great at the moment. If I want that to be a larger fraction, I can go with defrac instead. And it would look more like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our macro. And all we have to do is type backslash def for define. We are going to define a new command. What do we want to call our rational function? Maybe we'll just call it backslash eq1 for equation one. So we're defining equation one. And then in curly brackets, you're going to type the code that you want the compiler to run every time you type backslash eq1 inside of your document. So you're gonna have to decide if you want to include the dollar signs as part of the command or exclude them. I would say it's safer to exclude them just in case you're in a situation for example, if you're uh, doing it in an equation array or you're in a begin align environment where you don't want to use dollar signs, uh, you might run into issues there. So I am going to omit the dollar signs and just type the actual equation part there. Now, when we do want to call up this function within our document, we're going to have to type the dollar signs. So again, you can decide if you want to include the dollar signs or not as part of the way that you have defined this special command slash eq1. So now that it's defined, we can use it. And it didn't look great just sitting there above critical thinking questions. Let's just make this a new item in our list here. Item. Uh, let's examine the function backslash eq1. Now again, this is going to be problematic because it's going to try and display equation one, but it's not in math mode. So you can see if I compile, it doesn't like that. It's telling me right, I can see right away, oh, you're missing a dollar sign. So we just have to put dollar signs around our EQ1 and we should be good to go. There we are. 
let's examine the function. So without having to retype the equation, I can just call it up like this. And then any at any point throughout my document, I can call that up again quickly just using slash EQ1. So that can be helpful. Let me show you um, some of the macros that I commonly use in my documents. I have this document um, open right here. This is one that I use very frequently. And this one, again, we're in the preamble is where we're defining these custom commands. So this one starts backslash new command, and then the name of the command in curly brackets. So this is the actual command that if I were not using a macro, I would just type this out within the body of the document whenever I want to use it. And this is going to increase the vertical space between items in my list. So it's adding more separation, if you want to think of it that way, the item sep. It's adding separation between list items. And um, this pound one is for is where I am going to input a value. So each time I this is this one is a little bit different because it's not um, a static command that is going to be the same every single time. This one I have to enter a value when I use this command, and this is the part in the code that's telling me that I'm going to enter a value right here where typically a number would be. So how do we use that after my begin enumerate? If I decide that I want more space between my list items, I can just bring up this command and I'm going to just type backslash set like this, backslash set. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to type how much space I want. So I can type the number one here, let's compile, and that has added some space. If I want more space, I could type the number two. And that gave me even more space. I, let's just really exaggerate it. I'm going to type the number five. And that's giving me a lot of space. Typically, I normally just stick with about 1.2. That's my, my go-to. Unless I'm trying to leave room. Maybe if I'm typing a quiz, I want to leave room for students to write answers. Although, I typically do that with a vfill rather than uh, the set command. So that is one that I use often. Another one that I use often, let's go over here. Um, let's look at this one. Now this one is going to require, I believe, that we use a certain package. Yeah, we're gonna have to use our um, packages. You can see I have a lot, of, a lot more packages loaded in this sample document than the one we're working in right now. But let me go ahead. Our commands go in the preamble. So I'm gonna put that one up here. And this one is going to insert a calculator symbol. The command that I would be typing is just slash calculator. But we are going to want to use these two packages, Tixie PGF plots. So I'll come back up here where I've loaded all of my packages and let's compile Oh, I haven't actually asked it to use that command, so let's try using it and make sure it works. So I'm just gonna right here, let's say I want um, to let people know that this is a calculator active question. I can type backslash calculator, Oop. compile, and then it's gonna insert that little calculator symbol. Now, I need a space between that and let's, so I always just put an extra backslash like so, and that's gonna give me that little extra space that I need there. And so if I'm typing up a set of homework problems and my students know that they can use a calculator on that particular question. So that um, is a really great use of this macro because I don't wanna to have to type this code every single time I want to insert that calculator icon. I just do it once in the preamble, and then whenever I wanna use it, I can just type the backslash calculator. So that's how you do custom commands in LaTeX. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna talk about here is inserting graphics. Now it's important when you insert graphics, and by graphics I mean uh, image files. JPEGs, PNGs are typically the ones that you're gonna be working with. It's important that you save those image files in the same folder where you've saved your tech file. So let me open my finder window. 
This is the folder where I've saved my tech file. This is the tech file we are working on right now. It is in this folder, LaTeX Tutorial 6, Packages, Macros, and Graphics. So I'm going to find the image that I want to use. I've saved it to my desktops to make it easy to find. It's right here. So I'm going to copy that. And then I will come back here. This is the folder where my tech file is. And I'm going to paste that image file in this folder. They need to be in the same folder for the compiler to find the image. Otherwise, you will get a compiling error. So let's go back up top because we do need to load a package in order to insert images. So the package that we're going to use, use package, graphic, X, graphic X, that is the package that we are going to use. And then where I want to insert my image, let me go back to a page width view here. Let's put the image uh, right above question number one here, or statement number one here. We'll put it before the enumerated list. So in between critical thinking questions, I'm gonna insert my image right here. And the most basic way to insert this image, backslash include graphics, you can see that the suggestion is popping up. The scale, now I can go with a scale of one. I find that typically scale of one, it sounds like it should be the right size, right? Because it's 100% scale, but it's usually really big. So uh, if I do use scale, I find that I normally have to use a number between zero and one, but we'll, we'll just try it and see what happens. So scale equals one, and then you type the name of your file. So let me go back to that folder because I've forgotten the name of it. So the file is limit.png. So here I'm going to type limit. I don't have to type the .png. You can, it's fine, but you don't have to. You can omit the dot and then the file extension. So if I had a limit.jpg file, I could also just type limit. And let's compile and there is our image. So it is bigger than what I would like for this document. You can see the font size here on the axes is a whole lot bigger than what I have in the rest of the document. So we can decrease the scale, maybe try 0 0.8, still too big. I mean, let's go with 0 0.6. I typically don't use scale I typically want to make sure that all of my images have a consistent width or maybe a consistent height. So there is another option for sizing your image besides using scale. You can specify the height of your image. You can specify the width of your image. So let's just do width equals, and we will try five inches. Okay, so that's pretty big. I don't know why I went with that that big. Let's try 3.5 inches. Now you can also specify the height instead of the width or at the same time. So if you change the aspect ratio, things are gonna look a little wonky. Let's try height equals five inches. And you'll see that I haven't maintained that aspect ratio. So typically I just do one or the other, either width or height. You don't have to use inches, you can use centimeters. Um, you can also use percents. So we could say something like width equals, uh, to do a percent, you wanna do something like this. Zero, let's, if we want 50%, we could say 0.5 slash text width. So that's gonna make the width of the image half of the text width. Yeah, that looks about half, right? If I went with um, 0.75, that's going to be really big because it's going to take up three fourths of the, um, I can't say page width because it's not including the margins, but the text width, right? So that's another way that you can size your images there. And if you want something smaller, now it's only one fourth of the text width. Now, if you want the image to be centered, Let's go back to point four. If you want your image to be centered, and this is the way that you're uh, inserting your image, then before the image, we can do backslash begin center. And after the image, backslash end center. So we don't want to center everything on the page. We just want to center the image. Okay, so that is the 
a really simple way to get uh, graphics into your document. There's nothing fancy here. We don't have a caption, you know, labels, any of that kind of stuff. So if you do want to have a little more control, maybe you want to add a caption to your image or you want to have a little more control over the placement of your image, then we can put our image inside of the figure environment. So let me take away begin and end center because there's a better way to do that. If we, right before the image, backslash, begin figure, and then right after the image, backslash, end figure. All right, let's compile that. And you'll see that it moved the image. Now in the code, I've placed the image between critical thinking questions and my enumerated list. But the compiler moved the image and it displayed it at the top of the page. Well, if, if you don't like that, you have some options for telling it where to place the image. Here we can do in square brackets an H for here, place the image here. Now that might not always work because sometimes the compiler thinks it knows better about where that image would fit best. Like if there's not quite enough space where you want to put it, or I honestly, I don't know how it, how it decides exactly where to place the images, but sometimes even this lowercase h doesn't work. If you want it at the top of the page, you can use a T. If you want to place the image at the bottom of the page, you can use a B. And that moved it down to the bottom of the page. But normally I want my image to be right where I coded it. And so I use a capital H. But if I try and compile this, I'm going to get an error because the capital H requires a special package. And that is the float package. So that is one that I almost always load in my documents in case I need it because it is also really useful for placing tables, not just images, but also tables. And so if you load that flow package and you use the capital H here, it will put the image right where you have the code for the image, regardless of whether it fits well in that space or not. And if you want to center your image, then inside of that figure environment, you can just type slash centering. So that will center the image and also the caption if you use a caption. So if we want to place a caption below the image, I can end my line here and type backslash caption and then in the curly brackets type my caption. So this is a visual or oh, let's just call it, let's just say this the squeeze theorem. Now notice all I said was caption the squeeze theorem. I never typed figure one, but look when it displayed the caption, it labeled or numbered this figure for me automatically, which is really nice. If you have several images in your paper, it's going to number them as you go. And then later, if you go back and insert another image, it will automatically, you know, reset all of the numbering and number everything appropriately. Now, for those of you who are using Overleaf, let's talk about how to insert an image here. So I've just copied and pasted the code from my TechMaker file over here. And when I hit compile, I did get a compiling error. It looks like I have two errors and it's because it can't find the image I've asked it to include in the document. So it's looking for this, this file called limit and it can't find it because I have not uploaded it here into Overleaf. So you're going to want it to appear in this list along with your tech file. So here's our you know, main tech file. I can rename this if I want so that it matches the other one, tutorial 06. So you don't want to always have main.tech be your file names here because then when you start exporting things to your computer, you'll have multiple tech files that all have the same name. So I do like if you're using Overleaf, get it in the habit of renaming those files. Okay, so we need to upload an image and place it here in this list. So here is the icon to upload and then uh, you're going to find that image on your computer. You can drag and drop it into the box. I have that image on my desktop, so let me do that. I'm just going to drag it over here and drop it. And it appears right here. So now when I compile, it should work out. 
Okay, and there we go. There is my image. I had no problems finding that file because it is, again, in the same folder here in the same directory as the tech file itself. So that does it for this tutorial. We talked about loading packages. We looked at defining some custom commands and then how to deal with inserting images into our documents.